Welcome to Reflecting History. In this episode, I'm releasing an old episode that I did over on the Patreon bonus feed a couple of months ago. I think I may release maybe one or two bonus episodes a year on the main feed from here on out. I've always enjoyed the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. I think it's an underrated day of the year. So I figured today would be a good day to put it out. But I also think the topic of the episode is sadly more relevant than ever. That being said, if you enjoy the bonus episode and you want to hear more, I've had a bunch of fun making these bonus episodes. It's almost like its own separate podcast. I've been talking about some of the movies that have influenced me over the course of my life, short stories, books, some philosophy stuff, and some history stuff that might not necessarily fit on the main feed. I've been doing it on the bonus feed, and it's been a lot of fun. So if you like what you hear and you want to get some of those bonus episodes or some of that bonus content, or if you just want to support what I'm doing in general, you can go over to the Patreon page by hitting the link in the show notes. If supporting the show with a buck or two an episode doesn't make sense for you right now, there's other ways to support this tiny operation. You can leave a review on Apple Podcasts. You can tell a friend. You can subscribe on Spotify or Apple or whatever platform you're on. All of that stuff is great. And please know that I'm very grateful to everybody out there in the audience who's listening. And I'm very appreciative that you'd be willing to take the time to listen to what I have to say here. If you are curious, I do have a new series coming in on the regular feed that's going to start this Monday. I've been working on it for a while. I think it's a good one. And I hope you'll enjoy it. So, that being said, if you want to skip this bonus episode, feel free. But without further ado, my analysis of Harry Frankfurt's On Bullshit, just in time for Thanksgiving dinner with the extended family. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Bullshit is a very difficult term to define. As a result of this, one person's shrewd manipulator might be somebody else's bullshitting con man. Cultural critics, philosophers, educators, and ordinary people all around have certainly noted that we appear to be in an era of history where Bullshit is not only becoming more and more accepted, but it's actually becoming the norm. Whether it's public relations, whether it's advertising, whether it's politics, or whether it's the personal interactions that we have in our day to day lives, bullshit is everywhere. And by the way, that's a non judgmental statement. In my opinion, Everyone is bullshitting you in one way or another, sometimes even if they don't know they are. Everyone, including myself, has done it at some point, and everyone has been on the receiving end of it. To some extent, everyone's putting on a facade, a front, and maybe for a good reason. Just imagine for a second if everybody you knew was entirely open and entirely honest with you at all times, in both their public statements and their personal musings. Some might argue that this might actually be a good thing in the long run, but others might argue that a whole lot of problems could surface if everybody was always being completely honest and open, even in situations that might not call for it. I can see that debate going either way, but one of the main things to understand is that I do think that we often take bullshit for granted, and the extent to which this bullshitting way of operating in all of these different realms of society has taken hold and become a norm. Furthermore, this 
bullshitting atmosphere that we often take for granted is so difficult to define that some people might not have a good understanding of it. There's no true definition of bullshit that's going to match up from person to person, and there's no unified theory of bullshit. Philosopher Harry Frankfurt wrote a famous essay many years ago titled On Bullshit. I'll try to link to it in the notes. It's not too long, relatively short read, but he says, quote, One of the most salient features of our culture is that there is so much bullshit. Everyone knows this. Each of us contributes his share. But we tend to take the situation for granted. Most people are rather confident of their ability to recognize bullshit and to avoid being taken in by it. So the phenomenon has not aroused much deliberate concern or attracted much sustained inquiry. In consequence, we have no clear understanding of what bullshit is, why there is so much of it, or what function it serves. And we lack a conscientiously developed appreciation of what it means to us. End quote. That's sort of the introductory framework for Frankfurt's essay on bullshit, and he's going to go on to develop what he thinks is a good definition, why understanding this matters, and why bullshit seems to be so prevalent in modern society. One of the first things that Frankfurt does in his essay is review the previous literature. This is something that's common in historical papers or philosophy papers or psychology papers, sort of the introductory discussion where they talk about some of the previous studies and previous things that have been said on the topic. And in this case, for Frankfurt, there wasn't much on bullshit. What he did find was an essay titled The Prevalence of Humbug by a thinker named Max Black. For Frankfurt, the term humbug was sort of a synonym for bullshit. Max Black defined humbug or bullshit as, quote, deceptive misrepresentation, short of lying, especially by pretentious word or deed of somebody's own thoughts, feelings, or attitudes, end quote. So according to Black, bullshit is misrepresenting your thoughts, feelings, or attitudes intentionally, and sort of the more pretentious you are and the louder and more bombastic you are about it, the more sort of bullshit points you score. Harry Frankfurt thinks this is a pretty good working definition to get the ball rolling, but it misses some key points. And in some ways, it asks a lot more questions than it answers. The first point Frankfurt makes about Black's definition of humbug or bullshit is this element of deceptive misrepresentation. So according to Frankfurt, if you are deceptively misrepresenting something, then you are also deliberately misrepresenting something. This would seem to match up with our standard definition of lying, which would be sort of knowing the truth and intentionally misrepresenting it. For Frankfurt, bullshit is actually a lot more complicated than just simply lying. When thinking about bullshit, there is perhaps no greater bullshit artist than the fictional character of George Costanza. And according to George Costanza, it's not a lie if you believe it. So as Costanza points out there, the deep question is, if a person believes their lie, even though it's not true, can it still be bullshit? Or does bullshit have to be an intentional lie? Frankfurt, again, is pointing out that bullshit 
and the lying are not necessarily the same things and the definition that Black gives of humbug or bullshit doesn't seem to account for this. So when we get to Frankfurt's actual definition of bullshit, hopefully he will account for this and we'll get to that later. Another element of Max Black's definition of bullshit is this idea of pretentious word or deed. There's some sort of element to bullshit of action, of doing something, of a sort of swagger that is pretentious and probably unearned in most situations. The final part of Black's definition of humbug or bullshit has to do with misrepresenting not only the facts, but also your state of mind and your attitude. There's this way when you listen to a bullshitter talk where it's not just about the facts and the content of what this person's saying, but in some ways they're also misrepresenting who they are as a person, their character, their emotions, and their overall attitude and state of mind towards the audience. Ultimately, for Frankfurt, Max Black's definition of bullshit, again, which is deceptive misrepresentation by pretentious word or deed, which misrepresents not only the facts, but your state of mind, this definition is useful for taking a preliminary look at things, but it doesn't necessarily account for all of the different types of bullshit that we see in the world. For example, there is sort of this very careless and common bullshit that we might encounter all the time. Think about the bad contractor you had who, instead of actually fixing the problem, just put up a new sheet of drywall, essentially pretending that whatever the problem was isn't really there. Think about the cheap items that you buy that are carelessly made and fall apart within a few days of use. These are certainly examples of this sort of shoddy and sketchy bullshit, but we also have the opposite of that, a much more planned out and meticulous variety of bullshit. Careful bullshit. The stuff we see in advertising and PR, and politics, where people are getting together and trying to figure out the best ways to bullshit you. In both of these cases, the bullshitter is trying to get away with something and trying to spin a tale of reality that might not be true, but at the end of the day, what is the connecting tissue in these two examples? For Harry Frankfurt, His definition of bullshit is the thing that sort of connects these two things together. And for him, the true essence of bullshit is not about lying or exaggerating or misrepresenting your state of mind. For Harry Frankfurt, it's simply not caring about the truth. Bullshit is just a total indifference to the way the world actually is. Frankfurt says, quote, It is just this lack of connection to a concern with truth, this indifference to how things really are, that I regard as the essence of bullshit. End quote. Frankfurt then spends some time in his essay going over different situations that we typically think of when we think of bullshit and applying his definition, which again is a total indifference to reality, not caring about the truth at all, and he applies his definition and sees if this turns out to be a good definition for bullshit or not. The first example he brings up is something we've probably all done before. He calls it a bull session, and it's probably similar to what we would call just bullshitting around, shooting the shit getting together with your friends, there might be food involved, there might be video games involved, there might be athletics or sports involved, 
and essentially you're just hanging out with your buddies, saying things, having some laughs, and generally not taking the situation too seriously. We've all been in this scenario, and the purpose is to have some fun, maybe test out some feelings, test out some ideas, have some laughs. You certainly aren't expecting anyone to be recording everything meticulously and holding you to every word you say in this situation. Again, you're just bullshitting around. Frankfurt says, quote, Each of the contributors to a bull session relies upon a general recognition that what he expresses or says is not to be understood as being what he means wholeheartedly or believes unequivocally to be true. The purpose of the conversation is not to communicate beliefs. End quote. This example would seem to work out for Frankfurt's definition of bullshit. Here's a scenario where people are hanging out and no one particularly cares about the actual truth of whatever they're talking about. They're just bullshitting around. Frankfurt then goes on to discuss another example, which is bullshit as quote-unquote red tape, unnecessary and routine tasks that we all have to go through. Typically, this happens at work, but not always. And the reason we hate red tape so much is that filling out that useless paperwork or going through the motions that we've already been through a million times is not actually important to the real truth or the real function of whatever the goal or the mission is. It's totally irrelevant, but we have to do it anyway. Red tape becomes bullshit when it has no relationship with anything that's actually functional or useful or truthful. It's simply bullshit. Another example of the common use of bullshit that Frankfurt applies his definition to is this idea of a speaker who is full of what we would call hot air. Frankfurt says, quote, When we characterize talk as hot air, we mean that what comes out of the speaker's mouth is only that. It is mere vapor. His speech is empty, without substance or content. His use of language, accordingly, does not contribute to the purpose it purports to serve. No more information is communicated than if the speaker had merely exhaled. There are similarities between hot air and excrement. Incidentally, which makes hot air seem an especially suitable equivalent for bullshit. Just as hot air is speech that has been emptied of all informative content, so excrement is matter from which everything nutritive has been removed. Excrement may be regarded as the corpse of nourishment, what remains when the vital elements in food have been exhausted. In this respect, excrement is a representation of death which we ourselves produce and which, indeed, we cannot help producing in the very process of maintaining our lives. Perhaps it is for making death so intimate that we find excrement so repulsive. In any event, it cannot serve the purposes of sustenance any more than hot air can serve those of communication. End quote. In this example, bullshit is simply what's left when you remove all of the actual content and usefulness from a particular speaker or a particular situation. We've all heard that speaker or listened to that politician or been to that seminar or had that friend who was able to spend a whole lot of time talking with a very little amount of actual substance to extract from the long and bloviating pontifications. I hope I'm not guilty of that myself here. Another common example in everyday life that Frankfurt points to as a good way to understand bullshit is the idea of bluffing. For Frankfurt, To bluff somebody is more on point as far as bullshit goes than to say that lying has a connection with bullshit. Here's where Frankfurt begins to get into the distinction between bullshitting someone and lying to someone. 
the idea is that to lie to someone, you actually have to know the truth at some level. For the liar, this person knows the truth or they know what actually happened and they are intentionally deceiving someone into thinking that that's not the case. They might be doing this for a variety of good or bad reasons, but the point is that in order to tell a lie, you sort of have to know the truth. You sort of have to know the facts at least a little bit and care about them. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to craft a lie. The bullshitter, on the other hand, has much more freedom, much more creativity, and much more room for craftsmanship when he begins his bullshitting tirade. Because facts simply don't matter for the bullshitter like they do for the liar. The bullshitter only cares about what suits him or her personally, in a way that the liar doesn't. This might be why bullshitters seemingly can tend to get ahead in life and are sometimes even appreciated and can have devoted followings. It reminds me in that scene in Role Models where Jane Lynch famously says, you can't bullshit a bullshitter. There's this sort of artistry to it. There's this sort of respect you have for someone who's able to craft this web of bullshit and seemingly have no cares about the facts or elements of reality that the rest of us decent people are constrained by. Frankfurt summarizes this idea by saying, quote, It is impossible for someone to lie unless he thinks he knows the truth. Producing bullshit requires no such conviction. A person who lies is thereby responding to the truth and he is to that extent respectful of it. When an honest man speaks, he says only what he believes to be true, and for the liar, it is correspondingly indispensable that he considers his statements to be false. For the bullshitter, however, all of these bets are off. He is neither on the side of the true nor on the side of the false. His eye is not on the facts at all as the eyes of the honest man and of the liar are, except insofar as they may be pertinent to his interest in getting away with what he says. He does not care whether the things he say describe reality correctly. He just picks them out or makes them up to suit his purpose. End quote. Frankfurt goes on to say later why, in his opinion, the bullshitter is actually more dangerous and a greater enemy of the truth than the liar is. He says, quote, Someone who lies and someone who tells the truth are playing on opposite sides, so to speak, in the same game. Each responds to the facts as he understands them, although the response of the one is guided by the authority of the truth, while the response of the other defies that authority and refuses to meet its demands. The bullshitter ignores these demands altogether. He does not reject the authority of the truth, as the liar does, and oppose himself to it. He pays no attention to it at all. By virtue of this, bullshit is a greater enemy of the truth than lies are. End quote. For Harry Frankfurt, this is really why understanding bullshit is so important, because he regards it as one of the most dangerous things that's happening in our current society, and that's not to ignore that bullshit has been around historically for a very long time, but I would say that Frankfurt might argue that we've created a sort of niche in society where bullshit is able to survive and thrive. There's certain incentives that many people in this modern world we have are playing by, and there's many rules that even young people are playing by that are incentivizing bullshit more and more. At least it seems like. One example of this might be sort of the overall culture of social media, where people seem to be incentivized to speak about things that they are relatively ignorant of. I mean, just go on your Twitter or your Facebook or, you know, your Instagram or whatever, 
and it won't take long to begin wondering how many of these people posting about these issues are actually relatively even close to a level of knowledge and understanding to have a firm grasp of what's really going on? Or is the incentives in this situation not to get at the truth, but rather to get likes, get retweets, get follows for the average person and for the maybe even the academic types? Is it speaking fees? Is it book deals? Is it exposure for the politicians? Is it publicity? Is it rallying the base or whatever the case may be? But Frankfurt's point is that a lot of this type of stuff is not about getting at the truth, which means we now have a ecosystem where bullshit can be thriving. Another hypothesis for why there might be so much BS in our society is, in Frankfurt's view, people in a democracy are incentivized to have opinions about everything. It seems like everyone has to have opinions that fit into a box, and if you take one step outside of the box, you could be in trouble. This leads to another problem, in my opinion, which is that saying, I don't know, is often seen as weak. So you might have people offering opinions on matters that they don't know the truth of, which in Frankfurt's view would make them bullshit, but they don't want to say, I don't know, because this might seem like a weak answer. Another reason Frankfurt says that bullshit might be on the rise is seemingly there's been a rise in skepticism about objective reality at all. Frankfurt's theory of bullshit hinges on this idea of truth. For him, a bullshitter is simply someone who doesn't care about the truth. But There's actually some debate, and honestly, some legitimate debate about whether truth exists at all. I mean, this is a whole branch of metaphysics and philosophy and epistemology and all this stuff, and I think it's fun to have those conversations and to debate this idea of truth, but I do think it does give room for the potential nefarious bullshitter to sort of worm their way in there and jump to this fatalist bullshit approach where they can exploit those concepts to their own ends. Another example that Frankfurt points out as to why bullshit might be on the rise is the, as he puts it, the rise of sincerity to the self being more important than truth and objectivity and correctness. Again, this objectivity or truth is often sometimes even illusory, almost always difficult or impossible to understand and attain without really devoting yourself to understanding. So it seems, according to Frankfurt, that many people jump to this idea that as long as you're being true to yourself, that's what real truth means. And in Frankfurt's view, this gives the bullshitter room to appeal to people's emotions and their fears and their inner selves rather than appealing to objective truth. Frankfurt pushes back on this idea by saying that internal truth or truth to yourself is actually at times even more difficult to understand than truths outside of yourself. I mean, think about all of the things that are going on inside your consciousness right now and all of the ways that you've changed over time as a person. How do you explain the thoughts that you have in your head? How do you explain when you have them? How do you explain why you're conscious at all? So in some ways, these internal truths are just as susceptible to the problems of objectivity that we talked about with external truths. Frankfurt says, quote, There is nothing in theory, and certainly nothing in experience, to support the extraordinary judgment 
that it is the truth about himself that is the easiest for a person to know. Facts about ourselves are not particularly solid and resistant to skeptical dissolution. Our natures are, indeed, elusively insubstantial, notoriously less stable and less inherent than the natures of other things. And insofar as this is the case, sincerity itself is bullshit. Bullshit.